Hey everybody! Welcome back. Northern Lion plays Dead Cells. We're streaking! <laughs> Let's maybe not get too uh, out of control with our optimism here. We're streaking! We won the last run. It was fairly comfortable in the whole scheme of things. Start with 46k here as well. Oh, dude, this ain't a bad loadout, if you know what I mean. Um, it does sort of stink that, I mean, the game's in early access, so uh, we're not able to progress any further than the wharf for now. But you know what? I want to keep playing, give myself a good foundation for when they eventually move past it. I don't know how long it's going to take to beat the game. That was such bad damage on my part. Could take 100 years, who knows. So I'm just going to go straight for the streak. I'm not going to worry about like, oh, last time we went skills, this time we're going to go strength. I'm going to go straight for the streak. And uh, we have a build that we know works. I think we go straight for HP this time because we, we know we're going to need some. Um, we have a build that we know works. If I get the opportunity to do, you know, Frost Blast with like extra slowdown again, I'll probably take myself up on that because it ended up being a, a great combination. But for now, I'm just eager that I can play the game and I don't want to say zone out, but I can play it and like have fun without worrying simply 100% about how things are going. Unlimited ammo and 10 extra damage, 10% extra damage. We get Knife Storm, which gives us bleed and it does extra damage against burning targets. But I'm, I'm happy, like, we got the monkey off our back, if that makes sense. We were uh, kind of, like, cursed against the Watcher. I didn't realize that, effectively, for right now, the Watcher is actually, like, the last boss. So, <laughs> guess I guess there's not really a need to be so concerned about things. But it's nice, you know, maybe I got, like, another Isaac, basically. Extra damage when doing a critical hit. The problem is that I don't intend to be doing too many critical hits um, with our current combination of uh, items. I don't want to go below 50% HP. That's not enough to be happy with. Broadsword that fires an arrow I think is fine. Grenade is also quite great. Does the grenade light things on fire? No, it releases poison. As does... Oh, this ignites the poison. And this does extra damage against a burning target. Wait a minute. Let's go toxic instead of grenade, and I want to see how this goes. I'm not sure if my intentions are becoming clear here. It is yet another burning synergy, but it's a more novel burning synergy than we've ever had before. So the toxic cloud... Might as well see. The toxic cloud lights these enemies up and poisons them. And then the Knife Storm does extra damage. I gotta be honest with you, it doesn't seem like that amazing right off the bat, but it doesn't strike me as bad. It just strikes me as, uh... Wow, that's a really bad phaser. It just strikes me as maybe not being, like, a late-game potential, but for right now, it's doing the job. I can't deny that. When I, when I said another Isaac, what I mean is simply that, uh... You know, it's something I can... I don't want to say, again, zone out, but I can... Play sort of pseudo mindlessly while I talk about other stuff, and I think that's important to me. We looked at this, didn't we? Does it do no, just a volley of arrows? Um, so we're basically done right now. And the grenade does poison as well. Probably want to go broadsword. Ah, yeah, I do like the broadsword. Um, and we're out. We're gonna go ossuary again because I think that gives us the best chance. If we live, we get a lot of. A lot of extra build and a lot of loot out of it. Because I was just thinking, I finished the NLSS and I made myself a sandwich. And I was so excited for the sandwich because, A, I love sandwiches to begin with. My wife uh, is, I mean, she's Canadian, but she was born in Korea. And sometimes, this is going to sound like it's coming from a place of insensitivity. It's not at all. Sometimes if we go and we visit my hometown uh, for a while, which is, like, extremely Caucasian. Like, probably, like, 96 to... Well, maybe like 90 to 96% Caucasian. We don't eat a whole lot of rice. And at rice, we eat, or at, at home, we eat rice all the time. And she'll be like, I actually have to consume rice. Or I don't feel like something, you know, something feels like it's gone wrong in my life if I'm, uh, if I go a whole week without consuming rice. I actually can completely relate to that. Because I feel exactly the same way about sandwiches. Like, when I eat a sandwich, it just feels like I'm fulfilling my purpose culturally. It's like I feel self-actualized on an extreme level. I don't know how I feel about this combination right now. So first off, I was excited because it's a sandwich, and I'm always excited about sandwiches. But secondly, 
I had some extra potato chips. You know, let little leftover, uh... Miss Vicky's, which is a Canadian kettle cooked brand. They also have them in Norway, although I forget what they're called. That's not a joke. They... I can't remember if the Norwegians stole the Canadian recipe or vice versa, but, um... I mean, I'm gonna say it doesn't really matter unless they stole it from us, in which case it matters a great deal, sir. Either way, um... Great crunchy potato chips, but that's the main reason I was excited. Was to be able to put the potato chips on a sandwich, and then I asked on Twitter, I said, hey, Twitter. I guess we don't need to go up there. Uh, I said, hey, Twitter, why is no major sandwich chain? There's probably, like, local delis and stuff. Giving you the option to add potato chips to your sandwich as a topping. You know, potato chips are relatively cheap. You don't need a lot of them to make the perfect crunch on a sandwich. I was surprised. I had a lot of people who were in the know. They said to me, NL, it's a great idea. You're the smartest man on earth. And I said, stop it. Probably not even in the top three, but I'm glad to be in the running. Um, 59 seconds ago. It hurts. Um... Then I had, I had a surprising amount of people who had clearly never tried it before say, Oh, because they cater to adults. And honestly, like, get, get that trash out of here. Get that trash out of here if you're just going to be so dismissive. Potato chips on a sandwich are totally fine. Does lettuce give you an adequate crunch? I would say most of the time, yes. It's not like I'm, I'm going out and buying potato chips once a week to put on a sandwich. That's a little ridiculous. But if I have them both... I'm using them. The crunch is superior. The flavored salt adds a nice element of savoriness on top of the uh, the bonus that you already got going on. And I, I can't deny, I, I can't lie to you, the crunch is incredible. They're not that unhealthy, you know, if you're only going to put like, you know, less than 20 potato chips for a whole sandwich. That's not that absurd from a health standpoint. And you're already, you're going to go to Subway. You're gonna order a foot-long sandwich, and then you're gonna go, Oh no, skip the potato chips, I'm on a diet, right? That's a little ridiculous. Get that trash out of here. Give it a sec, just give it a sec. That hurt. That hurt even more. Ah, we recovered a little. So I'm just wondering, I don't know if it's maybe you gotta work out a, a deal with the potato chip company, the liaisons. Maybe there's more politics involved than I thought. Maybe it is like a branding issue. You don't want to be the brand that like made potato chips the sandwich ingredient because it makes you look bad in the public eye like the KFC Double Down. I don't know, man. But I'm waiting for it. I would definitely, I would get potato chips on a sandwich every time. Almost every time. You know, I don't, I don't know if you want it on like a grilled cheese necessarily. It seems like the texture would be a little off, but... On most sandwiches, I would go for it. That idea is for free, dude. I don't need to, you know, get invited into the Dragon's Den, you know, subway boardroom. And they're like, how much do you want this? How much do you want us uh, to pay you for this idea? I got my own good thing going here on YouTube, you know, and, uh, and on Twitch as well. I'm not, uh, I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it for the enhancement. I am still boycotting Subway for other reasons, as we've talked about on the show a few times. You can go watch those episodes if you got to... If you're confused, but you know, so it's not. I'm not saying specifically Subway. You know, if you want to do it at uh, Quiznos, by all means, by all means. People go, oh, uh, fried potatoes on a sandwich. That's ridiculous. Hey, we got fried onions here. Would that be okay? Yeah, of course I want fried onions on my sandwich. What's the difference, dude? You've got like a cultural bias towards potato chips. You've been potato chip brainwashed. Just give me the option is all I'm saying. You could get rid of one kind of hot peppers at Subway and give me potato chips in that stead. Just one flavor to start with. You don't need to get all, you know, too artisan with it. Ooh, but I only like, you know, this kind. Well, you know what? Honestly, too bad. You don't get to be part of the pilot project if you only like one kind of potato chips. Stop. Stop that. Stop that. I don't like our build right now, to be honest with you, but I'm still, I'm on this potato chip thing. If you don't like it, that's fine. I don't like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Is there meat back there? I thought I ate it. I think I did eat it. I don't like, uh, 
the tuna salad sandwich at Subway. I think that it's a gross concept for food. But I don't go into the Subway and go, I can't believe you're selling this. You know, I respect that a variety in choice is what separates us from the, from the animals. I mean, a bear trap that levels up our skills does feel good. I, I really feel like Knife Storm is not doing it for us, dude. We'll try the bear trap just for the skill level up for now. Um, I say this is someone who, whenever I get a sandwich at Subway, I usually get hot peppers and jalapenos if they got them both. But it, it's a nuclear array of toppings. I'm just going to be honest with you. It makes the sandwich hot enough that sometimes it can be even mildly unpleasant. I'm not afraid to admit it. Just got to, oh, don't swing in that. Don't swing in them there. That's a dangerous situation. Let's play it cool. I think we're probably good. What? We made it. And we got a blood sword. Gives us some life steal. Honestly, I think I might roll with this for now because it's a little faster. But anyway. You know, I'm just saying you could afford to get rid of one of the... Nah, it's fine. No! Oh, that was such a waste. I just didn't have my stuff equipped here. I should have gone with the grenade from the last four, honestly. Not very well built from a skill standpoint here. And that's predominantly when I've been leaning on to deal like all of my damage, so... Like, get rid of banana peppers, dude. Or get rid of jalapenos. Actually, get rid of jalapenos. Put potato chips in that slot instead. They've got to have less of a cost. They're not even a... They're not even a fermented ingredient. These fermented ingredients are expensive, man. We made it back. We made it back. Get some HP. Get some HP. Ceiling turret. I can't believe we've still never managed to get that to pop. So we do have lifesteal, recall. We do take more damage, but the lifesteal exists. We're not healing as much as I'd like, but... Honestly, this floor is all about, as far as I'm concerned at least, just making it to the point where we can... Uh, I mean, obviously we need that. Just making it to the point where we... Uh, can survive. Like, this guy has got to give me some HP. Thank you. A little, at least. More? More? If we ever get hit, we're gonna we're gonna feel the burn, but we're generating a lot of HP off these respawners, so that might be a positive thing for us here. I don't know how we killed him. I guess he used all his juice. We need the scrolls on this floor, because the build is not going right. And remember, like, we kind of, um... We had a similar situation, although I think we got a, a better loadout faster on the last run. Um, the situation on the last run was... The prison depths and, uh, and what led up to the prison depths, i.e. this floor, was really annoying. It was an annoying floor for us. And yet, um, we eventually managed to uh, get past it. And once you get past it, it's unlikely this is going to be the hardest part of the game for us. But it could at least... It should be done. It could at least be uh, the hardest part until after like the second boss. So, or sorry, after the after the first boss, we might as well look for other pendants now. Sadly, I've already used my respawn. Uh, damage taken reduced by ten percent is strictly better than zero, so we'll roll with that. It does suck to lose the respawn early, but we lost it earlier than we would have liked on the last run, and still came out with a W there. So. We don't necessarily have a great ranged build right now. Even the, uh, both of our abilities have to be used pretty close to enemies. In order to do any damage at all. 
But I do like, honestly, that there's obviously... Whoa, no! We lived. You gotta heal. You gotta heal. We're so lucky to be alive right now. Leaves flammable oil on the ground. I don't know. You know what? 10% damage is meaningless to me. The fact that we have a lifesteal build, I think, is pretty important for us. We might just want to go to the exit, though. I know there's going to be more heals, eventually. And I know there's going to be more stuff down here. We finally found something. Okay, give me the build. Give me the build. Uh, it's just a straight grenade, basically. Extra damage on a burning target and releases a cloud when they die. Okay. I think we'll take that. And then... I mean, we might just roll that in bear trap, because we have fire coming out of the bear trap, plus we have an extra level of skill. Or we have ignite coming out of the bear trap. Oh, maybe we don't. I don't know. I think just having spam ability is actually important for now, though. And we're going to go straight for skills again, I think. Because, I, you know, it works. It might seem like kind of a... A baby play. But honestly, like, you would look like a freaking idiot if you were playing Isaac and you were like, Oh, last run we had damage, so forget damage. Let's try to make this run work with range, you know? That would, that would make you look like a fool with your pants on the ground. Got your hat turned sideways. Forget the rest of the words. That's what I like to see right there. Dude, the toxic cloud is no joke whatsoever. Taking, like, 50% extra damage stinks. Nope. I mean, it stinks, like, real bad, but... What doesn't stink is having the ability to respawn, or recover a little bit of your health. I do think we could possibly justify going to the prison depths here. Holy crap, we found an item. Because I want to keep getting better, is basically what it comes down to. Extra skills. I don't know, the infantry bow is fine. Did we explore the whole floor? Pfft, yeah, pretty much. Like, kudos to us for literally exploring the whole floor there. I'm just like, you know, people I think are a little too... Up their own butts about health perceptions, man. The potato... I get that it sounds like a thing for children. To put potato chips on a sandwich. I have done this before in my life, and I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's slanderous. Wow, it's a, a single-use heal? That's weird. Might as well use it once, because once we use it, it's gone anyway. But, like, mostly, I just wanted to see what it did. So it's kind of like, I guess if you've got no better skill, you can use that as a potion, but... I've never, uh, at least in recent past, I haven't eaten a sandwich that's exclusively made out of potato chips and bread. I think that's a little infantile, but if you like it, you like it, and I'm not mad at you for it. I, I just, not my own personal sort of, wow, good start. Not my own personal way to live my life. However, to put potato chips on a sandwich, I know some of y'all out there are going, potato chips on a sandwich, that's ridiculous. Probably eating ketchup on a sandwich from time to time. And now you're going, what's wrong with ketchup? Yeah, that's how you sound to me. What's wrong with potato chips on a sandwich? If you can roll ketchups on a, on a, or if you can roll ketchup on a sandwich, you can roll potato seeds on a sandwich, dude. So I'm just trying um, to, I mean, I've already used the heal here in, in seconds. Rest assured. I'm trying to keep my HP as high as it can conceivably be for the time being. These platforming segments could be a little nightmarish. I understand we do have a damage boost that apparently we cannot get to. I would like to fight this guy. Oh, it's a champion spider tank, so life is cruel. What's the game plan? I mean, you gotta do as much damage to the spider tank as possible. I believe it is inconceivable for us to get out of this 
without fighting the spider tank. Like, it's, it's on us now. So you might as well play it slow. That is so actual garbage, though. Just heal up, just heal up. You did it to yourself, but... So I'm actually, like, a little bit mad. That's the end of our streak, and 20 minutes in, we're gonna be taking another approach here. You know what? This is actually a good opportunity. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, but I am gonna rush it a little bit. Because, I mean, we're, we're kind of... This is gonna be, like, an 80-minute episode to begin with. Let's just rush it and try to get to that ossuary timed door. And... If possible, the timed door that gets you, uh... The timed door that gets you, uh... After the uh, the Black Bridge fight, I, I don't even know if what I'm saying at this present moment makes any sense whatsoever. But essentially, what I'm just trying to say is, let's rush it, find the ossuary as soon as possible. We'll probably be under leveled. We don't really want that. Um, we do want the item. That's important. But at least we can get the time doors, and then if we get the time doors, we'll never have to worry about them again in the future. And and however long we live on that run, will just be a blessing, basically. Probably don't need to go for the money either. We should have something like six or seven minutes to begin with, though. So I think that only leads to a gold shield up there. We should be a little faster. You know what? I'm ready. Give me some more loot. I can't afford to be too picky here if we're going to go for loot right off the bat. Um, damage taken reduced by 10%. Yeah, definitely worth the cost of doing business here. A million percent. It's going to be Mummy Rub Central. In the heart of America. Let's go. Just check over here quickly and see if there's any extra loot bangers, which there are not, apparently. And we're, we're kind of pursuing a secondary goal on this one. And you know what? At least it's a break from just grinding uh, to get to the Watcher anyway. This doesn't signal that I'm bored with the game. Quite the opposite. What it signals is... Uh, I want to knock out the bonus objectives on this. It's like in Isaac, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, why do I not have real Platinum God? Oh, I got to use the Bible to kill Mom. And you nerf yourself deliberately to take the Bible to Mom. And, you know, maybe you pass up Satanic Bible in the process and leave yourself uh, a little bit more hurt than you'd otherwise like to be. You know what? I had that motto, slow is fast. Where did I get slow is fast from? That's It's from something. Like, I stole it. But now I don't recall what I stole it from. We just want to kill the simplest enemies. Milo, she throws me back a rubber ball. Oh, the stupid thing. Okay, maybe just go straight for like an actual run, you idiot. Frantic sword. Mm, baby's got bad strats and they burn. Okay, like, I don't know. Maybe that's a shortcut that we can take in the future to get to the graveyard or something. It seems like something this game might do at some point. I'm still, like, in the back of my head. I'm going speedball strats, but they clearly failed us that time. But I think... Honestly, the last two runs haven't been loving the uh, options we've had as far as our build goes. Not blaming the build, because, you know, there could have been infinity good things on our, uh, on our floor last time that we just didn't notice. Should take some HP early. Because we went too fast to notice them, basically, but... Hey, hey, hey. Thank you. How that didn't hurt me, I'll never know, but... Yeah, okay, you know what? Just slow it down. I would like to go uh, fast enough to make the, the bonus work, but... If it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Is Frantic Sword... Yeah, below 50% is the crit, so... I actually... There's basically no love lost for this item. For me. I'd rather have the chance to get some crits, at least. Even if it's not going to be 
reproducible against all conceivable enemies. So we've got three levels of HP. We could go for a raw strength build this time just to mix it up. And the downside to that is that it's riskier. It'll probably lead to some more dangerous situations, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. Don't have to wait for cooldowns. Dude, I don't want pendants. Damage taken reduced by 10%. Makes you invisible. I don't like the invisible one, actually. I do like reducing uh, damage from projectiles. And there's the promenade. I think I, I want to avoid just teleporting. Because I do believe that I might... Or not teleporting, but leaving. Because I think I might be an idiot. I think there may actually be... Um, that time door after the, the first boss, I may have already completed that once. So I don't want to rush that down. I think that would be stupid. Instead, so this is Mummy Rub Ossuary. The sewers are up that way. So there's nothing else. We've explored everything. I'm going to go Ossuary again. I got nothing against giving the Ossuary the old college try. You know, if we have to, we can always split this episode up into two. But we probably will not. Heal up here. I do, I'm, I'm eager to see what they do with like progression and shortcuts in the game. Because if the average Dead Cells run ends up being two to three times longer than the time it takes to get to the wharf right now. It's not conducive to easy, digestible, you know, lunch break, roguelite, YouTube mechanics. So... Ooh, plus one skills as well, huh? And this is like so infinity times better than our last one that I'm actually mad that I even tried to rush the last one when this one is so obviously the way. Yeah, this is actually a fantastic setup. So much to the surprise of no one, I know I said I might try strength. Probably actually just going to go straight to skills because this is working out amazingly. Enemies burn when they die. So we'll roll that. Um, continue trying to make the fire synergy work here. The cluster bombs are like acceptably good. Without a doubt. But it is nice to hold an enemy in place as well makes life easier for us. Especially if the fire grenade just does what it's supposed to. Come on, dude. I'm almost mad that you would even try it. And honestly, with the magnetic grenade, we can afford to be a lot uh, better with the assassin's dagger as well. Or the, the assassin's dagger, I should say, just becomes a lot better. So, I'm not worried about the timed door. This time, I think we got it um, for, other, for other purposes and means. Regular grenade, toxic cloud. You can jump three times in the air. I actually just don't think that that matters. Oh, how long though? How long must we sing this song? 16 seconds ago. Painful. That's fine. Life goes on and so do we. Not a curse chest, which is very nice. And an ice grenade. Frost related slowdown lasts way longer. Slows down all nearby enemies when the victim thaws out. So what I'm thinking, the magnet grenade is not bad. The ice grenade principal problem, cooldown and damage. Um, the damage being plus 50% is a little nicer. But also slowing down all nearby enemies when you thaw out has me uh, interested because it means if I, like you're burning right now. And I roll past you, okay? I roll, I roll past you is what I meant to say. See what I'm gonna do is roll past you. I wanna freeze you and then burn you and see how you react. Like you should slow everything down. What was that? That was your attack animation. Sorry, I didn't realize. Dusted. Not a pendant. Life is good. Uh, life's not that good. Although, even its regular attack is, is a lot better, so. Ooh, I'm going strength again here. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. 
So the idea here is uh, actually very simple. I don't know why the shield blocks temperatures, but sure. Oh. The idea here is very simple. It essentially comes down to uh, if you freeze them, I, I maintain that I rolled there, but that's fine. If you freeze them and then you thaw them, they're going to slow down all enemies in like an area of effect. And as a result, we're going to be in a much safer position for dealing with many enemies like simultaneously here. I assure you, you want no part of that, good sir. I'm going to head upwards for now. Doesn't really matter. I mean, we might want to go ramparts just to take the easy way out. Also, I guess that's another benefit I hadn't even considered. Um, the Frost Grenade is, is pretty nice at interrupting attacks. It does... Oh, dude. I, I mean, I think we would almost have to be stupid not to roll strength now. The game has bequeathed us a decent amount of these strength upgrades. Yeah, I mean, I probably should have gotten on the other side of him, huh? Four strength early has me very intrigued. Uh, I'm mad. I actually just don't understand how those attacks conceivably could have missed, but... Maybe I'm the silly one there. I was swinging my sword, like, right into his face. It's also not the broad sword, so the attacks are actually, like, reasonably fast. Bob, please. Okay, so what are we at HP-wise? We're at three? Dude, give me the strength. So we're gonna go for a raw strength build here. The danger, of course, is that it requires us to very much get up close and personal. But imagine the, the closer to a raw strength build we are, the more we actually want to pick up HP as well. Or the better we want to get at dodging, but I really feel like five strength is doing everything I needed to do right now. In terms of killing enemies on the ossuary with relative ease. So this this build or this run started as like, hey, let's um try to streak it. And now it has really become let's experiment a little bit. And I'm I'm okay with that. So we've rolled a uh, horizontal turret before, and it hasn't really gotten the job done for us, even with the burning synergy, but, you know, we'll give it a shot here. Again, again. We'll use our third heal, which I'll admit has me somewhat frightened. It's not as good at crowd control without having the, the ice grenade. In fact, it might not be as good at very many things. We are living, though, so... That's the problem for me, is that... If it doesn't... Uh, it's a Ramparts? Wow. If it doesn't uh, destroy... the enemies with a left trigger, right trigger, I don't think it's worth rolling. I think we might be better off just sticking with the ice grenade instead of the turret. I have, I mean, people have told me very good things about turrets. I'm not disagreeing with them at all. I just think that it's conceivable that maybe I'm not a turret boy for one reason or the other. It's gonna be a long, long time till turrets bring me back again to find I'm not the man they think I am at home. Oh no, I'm a turret boy. Enemies burn when they die. Extra damage on a stunned unit. Um, we're taking the electric whip predominantly because bow and infinite arrows is kind of overstayed its welcome. Damage boost with extra health. Lights enemies on fire. 
Covers the victim in flammable oil. I'm not that eager to take any of these. I wish I was. It would simplify things a little bit, I think. I don't want to do a challenge room. I'm just going to be honest with you on this one. Predominant reason I don't want to do a challenge rune is because, uh... The HP or the damage that we take in there is real, you know? It's like the Matrix. If you die in there, I'm, I'm pretty sure you probably die in real life. Well, in, in, in the game, at least. I'm almost wondering, what if we went, uh, like, super glass cannony? And just use the electric whip to deal, like, all of our damage. Because as of right now, that strength from the electric whip is actually awesome. Well, we have explored everything. Let's go give it a shot down here. And again, I, I, I kind of like, you know, get rich or die trying here. Ceiling turret. Honestly, I... We said it's a runabout experimentation. We should probably uh, experiment with the ceiling turret here. It applies flammable oil, so I'm I'm very sorry, ice grenade. I've been trying to uh, to make you work, but they keep giving me other options here that that are intriguing. Although I know I'm gonna want to come back to your crystalline goodness before before too long. I think I just upped my volume here, it's... What, what are you doing, though? I mean, I see you. I see you shooting. I'm not shooting. You see the situation here. I'm not sure if it's good. It's like having an oil grenade. What? It has a very low cooldown. I like that. I guess, like, I, I shouldn't be mad that we got a skill level up. That's also fine. And the prison depths are no joke. So to, so to make it through this section would prove that this build is at least, like, acceptable for the time being. Maybe a little bit better at, like, set it and forget it style, though? I don't know. I don't know! It doesn't shoot that hard, like... These enemies are living through the ceiling turret. It's got a cool look to it, though. I can't deny that. So the principal benefit is the oil, I think. Which is not a great sign. I know we need HP, but I'm going, like, hardcore strength right now. At least we can one-tap those guys. Like, that matters. I may die right here. Just swing! You gotta swing! Get that HP back. I think it sort of worked. You know what? I don't think this is as bad as it looks. I don't... And, I mean, I do... I mean, think in a strong... Literal phrase of the word there. I don't think this is as bad as it looks. It might very much be as bad as it looks. That felt great, though. Shots pierce and... Just the first target, but still. And... Uh, Frost-related slowdown lasts four times as long. This is a Watcher-worthy item here. And I'm still... Like, we got Watcher-level strength. So now my strat becomes apparent. It's a control build, all of a sudden. And I've gone from being afraid of this situation, to baby I'm amazed by the way you treat me every night. 
You tell me wrong from right, baby. I'm amazed by the way I really need ya. I'm not paying ten thousand dollars for cells. It's just science. I did see plus one health, but with the no, it's actually nonsense. I shot my arrow at him. I did see that rune back there as well. Whether or not I go for it, I think, depends on how our HP looks as we progress. But for now, I actually am struck with the sneaking suspicion that this might be, like, an appropriate uh, build, weirdly enough. There's not always times when that looked apparent. I think this is strictly better. Might only be good from like a meta standpoint, but that's fine. What? Okay, we next level obviously HP. Frost Blast is also great. Oh, I mean, the thing is, they're both so good. But the Frost Blast is like actually 10 out of 10. We should just heal. That's it's being stubborn if we don't heal. Another skill level. I act another skill level? I'm actually losing it here. Um, how do we, is there like a timed door or something? I don't understand how we get down there. It's like the only way in is, is you know what? Okay, sure, you got me. Maybe we gotta give that dude his rune or whatever and then we can get in there, but that one hurts me deep in my soul. Um, I'm not paying for that. It's not sensible. I'm not paying for cells. Not the kind of man I am. I tried it. Couldn't find it. I just want to get back to streak. Oh, baby. Back into the streak I want to see. I mean, that's a high damage arrow. Like, a really high damage arrow, but... Damage dealt times two, damage received times two. We can't. Extra damage on a frozen target. I mean, we could. Wait, you know what? He's a genius. Here's why this is gonna work. It does 7,000 damage on a crit. Here's why this is gonna work. First off, because I said so. By the way, I will I will admit I sort of feel like the floor generation has trapped us here. Like we've explored everything over here. There's no way for us to get down there. Oh, you're a dumb idiot. You just do that and then you roll. So here's why this is going to work. I, I, I don't think I need to explain anything more than that. You run in. You freeze the enemies. You don't even have to go for the roll behind smack. You just smack them. So we're gonna... This is beyond full glass cannon. Okay. We did almost die there. Please, come down. We almost healed up, though. <laughs> so, there's gonna be some... There's gonna be some scares. Viewer beware, you're in for some scares, dude. But more so than scares, you're gonna see some greatness. We're gonna see some laughs and some gaffs here, there's no doubt. What?! He didn't get caught in the Frost Blast. He was like an inch away from the Frost Blast. I don't believe it. Well, this was a silly run where we made no progress. But hey, it was fun nonetheless and we unlocked some stuff. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Sincerely. And thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Sincerely. And if you did, 
click the like button. Also, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.